you all need to accept that recording. And I'm um, going to start off, Dorothea, by asking you to just give a little bit of background and introduce yourself to the group. Yeah. Um, my name is Dorothy Liebig. I'm a psychologist. I'm based in Berlin. I was a very young mother when I was tw 21 during my psychology studies. We had our first son and then we had a long pause and then I was a very late mother. Um, and so we ha now have four children. And this year when they were moving out, I became a grandmother. So I think my whole life is also around children and young young people etc so my husband and I we said we, we had no time with no children since we were 21 or so <laughs> but this is also something that is connected with my life very much no, so I can, could you move your microphone yeah, just please. a tiny bit I'm, I will is it better like much, this much better yeah 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 and so I'm, I'm working um, as a systemic consultant, especially with um, non-government organizations at the moment. And I'm working especially on the culture inside the organizations that really want to change the world, because what I have experienced is quite something that I call it purpose paradox. The more an organization wants to change something in the outside world, the less it has this inside itself. So. Um, <laughs> It's really about caring for each other and being compassionate with each other when we want to change the world. And is for me, it's, it's something really very, very important. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to, to, to be in a conversation with you because um, when I started this conversation with Dave, I felt like it was like the first connection with this when I became a grandmother last year. And now I'm really thinking this is something that will be with me the, the next years until I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not able to think anymore, because I think this is really something, these, these caring for um, eldership, I think is something profound that... that mm is now opening up for me and and I hope that we can really have a conversation about this because I think the world needs perhaps also different eldership um perhaps perhaps a different one that we have experienced um so it's it's really something that that is very close to my heart at the moment just on a coincidental note uh Dorothea's uh, Dorothy's, um induction into grandmotherhood happened on a at the moment of a phenomenal conversation on wonder last october it happened literally in the middle of that session oh my goodness yeah this was really oh something beautiful i got a message i was waiting the whole day because my son told me that that uh, her, his wife is in labor and then during the the wonder conversation i got a message that she's she's there and I stopped the wonder conversation and called my son. And this it's always connected with you, Dave, and the <laughs> sense of wonder. <laughs> well, there you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm a little bit because I'm I'm surrounded by by many wise people who speak very good English, and I really would love to. I'm I'm a little bit feeling. I don't want to pressure myself, but I really want to also to 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 give you some some ideas that really are touching me and i hope that we are that we are really able to to um have a conversation on this it would this would be wonderful yeah for for me um i don't know what you think dave if uh, when we start with this if you yeah, first why don't you start with the presentation uh, or first okay. we, we, there's a, a question that you want to ask or i don't know let's because we're a little delayed, let's just go through with the presentation. We can maybe ask a question in the pause. Yeah, good, 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 good. So <laughs> let me start. <clears throat> oh, no. Where is the presentation mode? Build ah. skirm okay, I have it. <laughs> presentation mode. So... Um, I would love to show you some things that really were very important for me the last weeks when I stepped into this field. 
And interestingly, there was um, in Vienna, there was a, a beautiful um, exhibition that called The Power of the Elders that was in 2018. And I was able to to uh, visit this exhibition and I also bought the book and there was a lot of, of inspiration um, yeah, in, in the new approach to eldership I th that really I think will perhaps hopefully also change the way we, we connect with, with uh, this face in our, in our life. So what I really liked very much when I connected with all the psychological uh, background that I have um, that I found this nice quote, an elder is always a human being who has been around longer than most. And so it's something different than old. And what I like is that we can, old can be applied to cheese and wine and computers, but not just to people. So we are being around longer than perhaps others around us. And what I also felt like what really made an impact on me that when I connected with my eldership, I connected with myself as a, as a young person. And I found Dave and me, here you see Dave and me uh, looking, I look at myself and this, this self, this younger self looks back and asks me questions. And this is really also interesting when it comes to ad the adventure of eldership and adventure always is something where I don't do not know yet what I will find. So it can be a challenge. It can be also sometimes dangerous. And for me, this is really very connected with myself looking at me. And this was something that, that I found really also striking that I was very connected to this young self of mine when I was starting to go deeper into my ideas about eldership. And what also was touching me was this quote of Pina Bausch, who said, I'm not as interested in how people move as what moves them. And I think uh, this is also connected for me with this, with these thoughts and ideas and feelings and resonances concerning eldership. So the question, what moves you when, when you think about eldership as an adventure or a challenge? And what moves us as elders? And what do we want to be in this world? So I connected with someone, I don't know if you know him, because he's not so um, he's not so so often seen in, in the English literature because he, he came from, from Italy to Germany and you don't find so much from him in uh, English trans translation. It's Romano Guardini. He was a philosopher and a priest. And he has created something and I'm, that I really like very much when I work with different stages of life. And he called this the ages of life. So the becoming more, more, more wise, more um, connected with, with inner knowledge and wisdom, etc. And what he says, what, what is important for him is accepting what is to make of it what should be as like, like a, a way of being in the world, yeah, realizing the good in every situation, accepting what is to make of it what it should be. And for me, it was very interesting and very inspiring when I looked at the, the last ages of life um, that he describes. And what he describes is that every, every age uh, cre transforms itself into a different one through a crisis. So the mature person that that is grounded in re in reality high energy high desire to work uh, go through the crisis of experiencing boundaries experience experiencing ex exhaustion the experience of it is too much Ill illusions of control fade away tiredness and i feel sometimes i i feel i know this feeling yeah that i come that I experience my boundaries, that I don't have energy like I had perhaps five years ago. And this new person that now comes, uh, that comes out of me, the elder person has different qualities, accepting my limits, my determination as in my attitude, my tolerance, my patience. And what I also feel like these experiencing of, of life's beauty, um, coming from this functioning mode that I had when I was younger into a more living mode as an elder person is something that is really also for me connected with these 
this uh, adventure or this this challenge of eldership. So if you want to add something, Dave, or also the others, please feel free. Does someone of you know Romano Guardini? Did you hear from him? What I can, I, we have translated something from him and I will, I didn't find it in my chaos, but I, if I have, have, have uh, found it, I will send it to Dave and he can share it with you because it's beautiful. His work is really beautiful and it's great to, to, to read what he says about these ages of life. So what is it all about? You know, this German Yiddish uh, word mensch, to become a real mm. mensch. And this is something that is so strong and also for me so connected with eldership. A real mensch is someone with character, dignity, a sense of what is right. And I think this is also something like a, the life's, life's journey is for me, it's connected with becoming a real mensch. And perhaps this is something that needs sometimes also this time yeah, to, to, be, to connect with experiences, to, to learn, to fail, and to become a real mensch. And I would love to, to ask this question again, what moves us? What moves me? And I also want to, and perhaps a lot of you know Ericsson's psychosocial mm. stages. And I think these are also so important for me at the moment because what he speaks about is these these two stages at the end of our lives this generativity versus stagnation and integrity versus despair and you will get all the slides here i don't want to go deeper into it but i want to go over it and then talk about uh, have a dialogue about it because first is very important for me when it comes to eldership is this ability to be generative so really to care more to care for others to accomplish things to make the world a better place and in in and the other side is this stagnation being self-centered etc not taking interest in something of of care or and so how can we stay in this generative um, way of being in the world how can I care for for myself to be able to do this because I think we are at the moment living in a culture of uncare and exceptional exceptionalism the, the climate crisis is connected to this and so the eldership connected to generativity will change something and then the next stage is much more challenging and much more an adventure in a way it's integrity or despair and integrity in his way, uh, as he sees it, is feeling satisfied that my, li my life is well lived. So acceptance, sense of wholeness, lack of regret, feeling at peace, calmness, sense of achievement. And the, the, others, the, the other side is spare. And what I found for myself, the question, how can I be aware where we have failed? As, as a generation, when you see the climate crisis and what's happening, how can we be aware of this and not fall into despair? Yeah, how can I can cre create something like integrity when he says, looking back with few regrets and the general feeling of satisfaction? I don't know how you feel about this. Yeah, when you see Gina, when you see your, your little uh your your little girl there and you think what will she experience when she's 80 or she's 60 and so i think yeah. this will be a question that we have to ask ourselves as these new generation of elders and i think it's really the question so what are we doing how can we not fall into despair and for me i have, i found two answers that are connected with the adventure of eldership is the first is protecting life and seeing life. We are talking a lot about VUCA and BANI and APIA and all these acronyms that are connected with these, these, this, this regret that we cannot control the world. Yeah, VUCA world. My, I come from a family of farmers. My grandmother said the world was always VUCA, volatile, uncertain, whatever. And so the question is, how can we protect life and speak and, and create new acronyms that are more life related? Like VIEW, we created VIEW out of this feeling we have to create different things. Vitality, interconnectedness, organic transformation. So from VUCA to VIEW, seeing life, protecting life. And also from ego to eco. From yeah, So as, as elders, let us really be a model for this. Heinz von Förster, the German 
a system thinker and Cuba, he was, um, he was um, how do you call this in English? I, I don't know the word in English. He, he worked on kubernetes so yeah how can we describe living systems and he said mm -hmm. we are free to act accordingly to the future we want to create and we could add for the future we want to create for next generations because my future will be 20 years or 30 years when i when i be very old but it, and at the moment this generativity means creating a future for others that are around when I'm not here anymore. And this is very connected to this, uh, another form of eldership, I think. And the question is when, if not us, who, if not now? This is, this. I love this, this is from Extinction Rebellion and, and I love this mm -hmm. crazy notion. Yeah, when, if not us, who, if not now? And the adventure, adventure of eldership, when I talked about this, it's, it, for me, it's really also about dancing between these life polarities, experience and beginner's minds, chaos and order, power and love, engagement and letting go. And I think eldership is really about staying there and, and not giving up, seeing what, but perhaps my generation, what I've done, I, 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 I was quite successful in younger ages and I flew around the world. And at the moment, sometimes I feel this shame and guilt and, why didn't I see what I, what I did there? But really not giving up and seeing that I have to 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 find my own my own words, my own images, my my own songs. And I would like to to end this little um, little thing that I have prepared for you with this beautiful poem from Eugen Drewermann. He's a he was a um, Protestant pastor, and I I translated it. I didn't find it in it in English, so I hope I translated it beautifully. It is the most important we can learn in life to find our being and to, to stay true to it. Because there are melodies, there are words, there are images, there are songs that only sleep in us, in our souls. To say them and to sing them only for this purpose are we made. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something, this is something that I really wanted to give you as my feelings and my thoughts and as a little bit of an impulse um, so that we are able to yeah, yeah, that we are able to talk about this um, adventure of eldership with having in mind what perhaps can be important for us in our generation okay and I hope I wasn't too long. I was really trying not to no, be too long. No, you did good. You did good. <laughs> and we'll, we'll have a little exchange and then we'll go into the break. Um, I think uh, thanks so much for pouring so much love and attention into that and exploring and digging up these uh, various concepts, the phases uh, of maturity and eldership. Um, just to sort of um, pinpoint this area of integrity, integrity or despair, or the two dynamics of uh, elderhood, eldership that uh, Ericsson's pointing to. And of course, you're associating that with, you know, the um, climate crisis and the ecological state of the world. So um, <clears throat> when we've explored this in our preparation, we've talked about the kind of generational shifts that have come uh, and our ability to um, respond to what's in front of us. So um, when, when uh, we've spoken about it before, you know, the eldership of our parents and our elders, their level of vitality and engagement in life, uh, for most of the elders I encountered when I was young, I didn't want to be like them at all because they were so cranky and unpleasant but also uh, they didn't offer anything that was of inspirational. So our generation has had all this privilege. We've had all these advantages like you were just uh, pointing to. How to approach this topic of um, the sort of the dark and the light sides of eldership now, like together in this space? What would you what would you say what are your approaches or what would you see would be a healthy way to um, hold those opposites 
in our cells as part of our growth, as it were. Was, it, was this a question to, to all of us? Well, no, to you. Um, ah. And we can pose that later if you like, but uh, mm. I thought I'd put it to you just because um, we've been exchanging about this a fair bit. So yeah, I think the, the first the first step into it is for me always as a psychologist is becoming awake and aware. Right. So really being aware of it and also seeing that that I have to deal with it. You know, as a German a child, I was uh, from uh, guilt and shame is something that I'm in a way that I know when I was at school and I learned from uh, about the Nazis and the Third Reich, etc. This was like from Monday to Wednesday, guilt and Thursday, Friday, shame. So the, the, the feeling of how could my ancestors, how could they do this? It was really it was something that was unbearable. And then yeah. also this feeling of and I'm part I, I'm, I'm in this German gene pool, whatever. So my my people did this. And I think perhaps therefore, for me, it's also so important to 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 be aware of what is there, what we ha what have where have we failed? Because I think if we are not aware of it, we cannot we cannot transform it, or we cannot be part of of something new and better. Mm -hmm. And I see that our perhaps our role at the moment is to 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 really to be part of and help the younger generations. Yeah, to have a future and do our part, okay. uh, and and step yeah. out of this, and be integer and step out of the of of yeah perhaps old patterns um, of apologizing whatever, embracing what 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 was there yeah uh, what where we failed and step into the future and do things differently. Yeah. So somehow there's a emotional and psychological attitude to those circumstances that can still be healthy. That can still and there might be a role for elders in the way that they can hold almost the appalling overwhelm of the ecological crisis, but hold that and still act for for this calling you are pointing to, this calling of what is calling me. I thought that was an interesting point that you were making a distinction there in terms of one's own development when we and you pointed out in the presentation of um, being awake to what is being called from me rather than my own development and making it in the world, which would have been an earlier phase, you might say. Yeah, yeah this is connected to Viktor Frankl's existential turn. And for me, the existential analysis is very, very um, important, especially when I become uh, older or elder. Yeah, and so the, the question, this, this existential term means that that I listen to what life is asking from me at the moment. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and and get, and being able and responsibility is then connected to to the ability to respond. Right. In a way that is helpful for yeah. for generations after me. So I'm caring for someone who will be after will be there after me when i'm not there anymore and and i think this is something that that we can learn from in from the elders 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 before us yeah. the indigenous elders so there there is a culture of this but we we lost it a little bit in yeah. our modern world i think eldership yeah. was quite also connected with caring for myself and 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 blaming young people because they are so difficult but and i think this is <laughs> we have to change this this is this is we really have to step back to these old patterns these old ideas about eldership and implement these old ideas into the, into the the here and now and care for the future we have we have to i think this is something that it, it's also it will be also helpful for our psyches and our souls it's much more healthy to care for others yeah. and to be egocentric yeah, yeah. and I, I i see sometimes these old people who are not able to to see and to love and how 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 this is for yeah. them it's not good it's not healthy at all so caring something you, one of the points you were making um partly about um germany and the legacy there but generations that came before us were also hugely traumatized so their ability to 
exemplify or carry on a lineage or transmit a heritage was impaired by modernity, but also their own trauma. So that was also something you could say that has been a blockage in terms of responding to these global crises that are running um, out of control. And uh, as, as you were speaking, I was just getting this, my own sense of somehow, particularly in the later the phase, and you were mentioning vitality, not having like physical vitality to work all day or 24 hours or to go down to the gym, but offering a kind of vital aliveness and faith in life and possibility um, as elders can offer uh, other generations that an ex an ex exemplify something different than despair, uh, only despair, or only kind of material ambition. And I think for me, El wise wisdom is connected with dancing with polarities, the polarities yeah. of life. And I think right, you cannot think about vitality without embracing mortality. Yeah. It, it, and I think this is something perhaps we are, perhaps I will be more in a vital, in a more connected with my aliveness when I get older and embrace mortality as I was when I was 50 and so successful and so whatever and functioning like hell. And in this, yeah, <laughs> perhaps this is really something that perhaps the, the adventure of eldership also is connected with feeling deeply alive and, yeah. and connected with other beings and yeah. seeing the beauty and the vulnerability yeah. of life. And I think this is like, I feel like there is like a space opening up and I don't know how you feel, Gina, when you look at these little ones. <laughs> it's 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 amazing. <laughs> it really it's amazing. It's completely overwhelming. And mm. and this is something that and I really want for all of us, all of us. And I would love to have a, a, an ongoing conversation about eldership because mm. I think really it's needed. It's needed. Yeah. And yeah. I now stop and I would love to hear all the voices and ideas that are here now in this room and i have to open the door to my dog because he's outside and it's like oh, i want to come in and this makes me nervous okay so i'm, I'm going to restock the recording and then we can go on to the next phase but i'll just um arrange that while you're letting your dog in okay.